You've just started playing Conqueror's Blade, and it's really fun, but you have no idea what you're doing and what you have to do outside of siege battles. Don't worry, I'm here to help you with my five essential tips. Tip number one, pick the weapon you like the most. You can always try out different weapons by visiting the Master at Arms, who will take you into an instant training ground. If you are still trying to figure out where everything is on the map, you can just press the tab key to open the map of the thief. Here you can click on any of the names on the right side and your character will auto travel and talk to that NPC. Although you should pick the weapon you like the most, please don't choose Nadachi, especially if you intend to be a competitive player. I see lots of new players fall for this trap as the Nadachi looks like a cool weapon. It is in fact one of the worst classes in the game and falls off heavily as you transition from low level games to mid level games. If you want to be competitive later on in the game, I suggest focusing on any of the heavy weapon classes, specifically short sword, long sword, or poleaxe. Check out the banner above to see my poleaxe guide, which I think is one of the strongest weapons of season 7. Finally, if you absolutely must play ranged, then pick the musket or short bow over the long bow. Tip number 2, picking the right starting units. It is very important you pick the Domain, Spearmen and Squires after your tutorial for your starting warband. This is especially important as you want to unlock the Spear Sergeants and the Men at Arms as soon as possible. By unlocking the Domain, Spearmen and Squires, this partially unlocks the upgrade tree towards your Spear Sergeants and Men at Arms, meaning that you will need less honor overall to unlock these units. With careful planning, you can unlock the Spear Sergeants before you are even level 30, and the Men at Arms in your mid-level 40s. In terms of progression into mid-game and late-game units, it is highly recommended you finish off unlocking all the units in the Chivalric line up to the Monastic Knights. The Monastic Knights are the cheapest tier 5 unit to unlock, and it lets you participate competitively in territory wars. Other units worth unlocking, number 1, Imperial Pike Guards. These are one of the meta units in the game, and the only unit which can both break formations with their advance and stop cavalry charge. I recommend unlocking the Imperial Pike Guard with the free tier 4 unit box you receive on day 21 of login. Number 2, Palace Guards. These are a great brawler unit with extremely low leadership. Number 3, Prefecture Guards. These are some of the best sword and shield units in the game with extremely low requirements to unlock and leadership to run. Number 4, Serfs. This is the only tier 1 unit worth leveling up in your warband, as they are the best for collecting resources and pushing siege towers other than the Martellatories, which are a premium unit. If you are in the open world to collect resources, make sure to take 4 Serfs and 1 other unit to protect your warband and precious cargo. For ranged units, number 1, Imperial Archers. These are one of the best archer units in the game after Pavis crossbows and are extremely viable to use in all levels of game. Number 2, Prefecture Archers or Incendiary Archers. Both Archers I think are equally good, just do not choose the Vanguard Archers as they are terrible. Finally, Cavalry. Do not waste honor unlocking any of the cavalry except to complete your quest. All the meta cavalry can be unlocked for free with seasonal challenges, specifically season 6 unit challenges, so I don't recommend using honor to unlock any. Otherwise, you will want to unlock the monastic knights with honor and the winged hussars with your free tier 5 unit box, which I will cover in more depth in the next tip. Tip number 3, focus on quests. As a new player, you will be bombarded with lots of quests, which are easy to complete. These are not only limited to the paths, which you can see by pressing the F4 key, but you can also see your daily quests and weekly quests by hitting the L key. It is highly recommended that you focus on completing all of your F4 quests as soon as possible, as they provide great rewards and help you progress in terms of honor, hero XP, and unit XP quickly. When you have completed all of your F4 quests, you receive a tier 5 unit box. This unit box allows you to unlock any tier 5 unit of your choice, as many of the tier 5 units are freely available through season unit challenges, there is only one correct unit choice. This is the Winged Hussars, an S tier cavalry. It is widely used in territory wars and even competitive siege battles. Even if you are not a cavalry player, I recommend unlocking these as it will save you tens of thousands of honor to unlock later on if you want to take the game more seriously. Tip number 4, Unit Medals and XP Cards. 
Don't waste your unit medals and XP cards training random units to random levels. This is a common mistake made by many players, including myself when I started. If you do not max out your units as you transition into mid-level games, you will find that you are struggling in many of your games as you will be playing against players who have max level units. It is extremely important that you train your units with the intent of maxing out their levels. Leveling up a unit provides the unit in question with additional HP per level and each veterancy point can be used to either unlock a unit ability or formation increase defensive stats, increase damage output, or further increase their health. Most importantly, max level units provide shared XP. This goes into your pool of shared unit XP which can be seen in your barracks. Benefit of shared XP is that when you play with a warband consisting of max level units, all the unit XP they would receive goes into your shared XP pool, meaning you can level up your other units without even having to play them. As some of the early level quests require you to level up your units, I suggest using unit medals on either the pike militia, iron cap swords, or squires. All three units are viable to still use in mid to high level games. Make sure to stick to one veterancy line when applying veterancy points to your units, as in most cases, you won't be able to unlock the final elite status if you mix and match between multiple lines. If you are unsure which veterancy line is viable for your units, you should check out Concub. I will leave a link in the description below. Tip number 5, crafting armor and weapons. As soon as your character hits level 30, you should craft a set of armor and weapon using a rare schematic. This gives you access to essentially end game armor and weapons, although your mileage may vary depending on your luck as no two items are crafted the same. You can get your hands on schematics easily from the seasonal store with blades by pressing F5. You should also receive additional schematics through completion of your F4 quests. If you require crafting material, you can buy this from the horse seller, which you then salvage at the smith. You can salvage the shielded chanfron from metal plates, steel bars and powdered silver, for paint and lacquer, wire and thread, and metal rings, and powdered silver, salvage the iron edge saddles. Do not use items provided to you as a drop from matchmade games or quests, as they are vastly weaker than those you craft on your own. It is recommended to either sell these as they are unbound, or to salvage for unbound crafting materials. For more information on how to tell if your crafted item is any good, check out the video in the banner above. I hope you found this video helpful, and make sure to check the description below as I will be including links to useful resources. If you would like to see more content like this, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. This helps my channel grow and motivates me to make more helpful content. I also stream regularly on Twitch, so make sure to drop by and say hello. And finally, thank you for watching and have a great day.